Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about how to use Mac OS photos, uh, photos for Mac OS with Luminar AI. Now I just want to take a quick moment and apologize if you hear any background noise. We had a really bad storm here come through in Southern California yesterday. It knocked over trees, it brought down branches, and um, my condominium's landscapers are right outside my window right now chopping down a tree so there's um, chainsaws and wood chipper going. So I apologize if that's coming through the sound. Um, not much I can do about it, unfortunately, but just wanted to give you a heads up in case it was a little bit background noise. Uh, let me go ahead and switch my screen over here and you guys should be able to see photos from Mac OS up on my screen. Now, not all of you will be using this. I know a lot of you Windows people might be going, okay, this, this episode might not be for me. We're gonna go ahead and walk through a full edit in Luminar AI. So if you stick around, you might learn something that way. Um, but this is really going to be geared towards our Mac OS folks who want to use Luminar AI as an extension with Photos for Mac. And this is a great workflow, whether you're using it, you know, a lot of people who use Photos for Mac, they use it with their iPhones, and some of them load the pictures from their big cameras and then they use this for their complete uh, photo management uh, resource. It's a great program, it comes free in the Mac OS. So if you're one of the people who uses this program already, it can be a great place to work from and make your pictures better and incorporate Luminar AI into your workflow. Now, the first thing I wanna show you is if you go to an image, you right click on it and you say edit with. This is basically an export. It exports it out of the program and it's no longer in Photos for Mac. And it just, I think it takes a JPEG over to, uh, you can see here we have the option for Luminar AI. Now, if you don't wanna do that, um, there's a better way. Let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to click on the edit button and you'll see this brings up the edit panel here in Photos for Mac and you can go to the ellipses menu and Luminar AI should be listed here. Now if this is the first time you're running this extension you might need to shall we say bless Luminar AI to run on your system as a Photos for Mac extension. So to do that what you're going to want to do is go to your system preferences and just in case you're wondering, the way I pulled that up was command spacebar on my keyboard. It pulls up the system search. I typed in system preferences and there we go. Now from this panel, and for those of you who are wondering, I am currently running um, Mac OS Catalina. I have not yet upgraded to Big Sur, but it should be roughly the same for those of you who are running the newest operating system. You'll go ahead and click on extensions. You'll go down to photo editing and you'll want to make that Luminar, make sure that Luminar AI is checked off. Once that's done, you might need to restart Photos for Mac, possibly even restart your Mac as a whole, and then it should show in that extensions menu. I wanna say hello to Wolfgang and to JGmail28. So glad you guys are able to join us today. All right, let's go ahead and have some fun with this photo now. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is already edited. I'm gonna go ahead and click revert to original, which takes me back to my original raw image. So I wanna do my edit completely on the raw image in Luminar AI. I'm gonna skip over any of these sliders over here. I'm gonna go up to the ellipses menu and click on Luminar AI. We'll go ahead and let that load up and it loads up right inside of Photos for Mac, which is really cool. So I'm just sitting here waiting for it to, to launch for me. There we go. <laughs> Give it just a second. Almost there. All right, so now we're back into Luminar AI. So. For those of you who are on Windows, you can go ahead and pick up from this point. Everything else is going to be pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and start with, let's see, I like the scenery category. There are some beautiful templates in here that are just so quick and easy. And I really like Fast Fix. You can see I've already marked it as a favorite. And when you mark something as a favorite, you can always go over here into this My Collection and into Favorites and find the ones that you've marked as your favorites in this category, so they're fast and easy to find. All right, so now that we've added our template, I'm gonna to go to the edit panel, and let's work on some of these colors a little bit. We've already got our Enhance AI up, and Accent is up, and Sky Enhancer is up. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that Accent AI up a little bit more. You'll see that's adding a little bit more contrast, a little bit more color, and I'm gonna pull back on that Sky Enhancer. And the reason for that is I feel like sometimes Sky Enhancer, especially on a vast blue sky, can make the blue a little bit unnaturally oversaturated. So I'm going to pull that off for now. Now let's go ahead and go down to our color tool. I'm going to pull up the vibrance a little bit there. And that's going to pop all of the colors. I also want to go down to landscape 
You can see that golden hour was added as part of our template. I'm gonna pull that up a little bit more just to add a little bit more richness to those gorgeous warm tones of the sunset or sunrise, I'm not sure which. And I think that's looking beautiful. The final thing I would do here is add a vignette. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that amount slider all the way down. And don't worry, I know it looks ugly, we'll fix it. I'm gonna make that size a bit smaller. Now that I can see very clearly where my vignette is located, I'll click Choose Subject, and I'm actually gonna move this over a little bit left of center, right around that iceberg. So there we go. Now I'll go into Advanced Settings, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring my feather up really high. And this is exceptionally important on images where you have that vast blue sky. If you have a harder edge to your vignette, it's gonna be really obvious that you added something unnatural. So bring that feather up really high and that'll make the transition nice and smooth. I also wanna add a little bit of inner light just to cast a little bit more light on that iceberg and what's going on right there at the focal point of our image. That looks great. Now I'll go back up to the amount slider and I'm gonna pull this back up and just adjust it to where I think it looks good and natural. And it doesn't glare at me like, ooh, we added a vignette. I think that looks really pretty. I might even back that off a little bit more. And there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and click out of choose subject. And now we can take a look at our before and our after. We've added some beautiful color and detail to this image. We've woken up the shadows and it looks wonderful. I wanna take a quick moment and say hello to Pat. So glad you're able to join me today. All right, so now that we've finished our edit, we can click on save changes and this is gonna take us right back to Luminar AI or I'm sorry, take us right back to Photos for Mac. And it'll then end up in our Photos for Mac collection. You can save it in your different albums. You can um, categorize that however you want here in Photos for Mac. And then it's also going to be synced across your entire iCloud photo library. So you can access it on your phone, on your tablet, wherever it is that you access your photos. That's the beauty of using Apple's Photos for Mac. So I hope that was useful to you guys. I hope that gave you a couple of ideas of how you can work with the Mac OS, Apple Photos, and integrate Luminar AI into that workflow. With that, I wanna wish you guys a wonderful, wonderful day. Oh, it looks like I have one more quick question. David says, if, I send you, if you send a raw photo using Edit With, it sends a TIFF. Good to know, David, thanks for clarifying that. All right, everyone, um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If you like this series, make sure you give us a thumbs up. And Vanelli will be with you tomorrow, and I will be with you again on Thursday. So have a great week, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.